on the air with us right now from the Hood Canal Salmon Enhancement Group, we have Seth Elson. Morning, sir. Hey, how's it going? Good. Good to see you. Same to you both. And uh, warm right now. Yes, just a little bit. It's uh, way past my melting point. I'm <laughs> born and raised here in Shelton, and I think after 75 degrees, I'm about You're done. About so I'm going to have to start thinking about migrating north here. <laughs> what is uh, any concerns that you may have in the waterways as the temperatures get uh, warmer before we get into our conversation today? Yeah, the main thing is just starting to stress out our fish, especially those that are getting ready to, to come back here to the canal. We've got Chinook that are starting to come back, and um, soon we'll have summer chum, which we're going to talk a little bit about this morning. And so just as that happens, they can start to stress out the fish, and it um, can affect their bioenergetics and how they, they migrate and things like that. So, Do you go out and check the temperatures of the waters now, or do you wait uh, for more sustained high temperature days um ecology is usually out there on a pretty regular basis just with their shellfish monitoring as well so it's kind of a way to kill two birds with one stone just kind of to help um, continuing to monitor our waterways and making sure and i um, mean it's not uncommon in, in uh, parts of eastern washington idaho montana they have what are called hudal restrictions whereas the um, water temps and the air temps get up above a certain amount they close fishing just because it's another stressor and yeah. um, we've seen that here in western washington at times but hopefully this is a, a temporary weather event because I'm done with it. <laughs> I think our fish are too. Volunteers are needed for summer chum trapping. Is uh, that the program that's coming up here? Yeah. So on August 15th, we'll start. Oh, this is, I think, just about our 20th year almost um, of the summer chum trap. So um, since uh, 2000, we've been working with the Department of Fish and Wildlife to monitor returning summer chum on the Union River in Belfair. So for our listeners here, um, you might not be aware, but summer chum are one of our threatened fish species in Hood Canal. So we all think of chum and we see all of them come back in the fall. And mm -hmm. that run is great and strong just about everywhere. But our summer chum, um, they're evolutionary, sig evolutionarily significant here in uh, Hood Canal and the Strait of Juan de Fuca. And so they're a listed species. And so um, back in the, the 90s, we started um, efforts throughout Hood Canal to try to rebuild their populations. And so one of those was the Tuhuya River where the population had actually been extirpated. Um, basically, we didn't have any fish returning for about five, six years straight. Um, and so the Union River, we were taking fish, we would trap them, collect data, and then a certain number of them would be spawned on site by volunteers and staff um, to be then put back into the Tuhuya River. And so um, we're done with the spawning phase, but we're just continuing to collect data. So volunteers help us 24-7 uh, for that two-month period, um, collecting all the fish and just uh, collecting data on the different species and helps us get a count to continue to monitor the population and, and its strength. You can go to the website, uh, pnwsalmoncenter.org, and see the headline, Volunteers Needed. You click on that, you can go right to the sign up to volunteer. Uh, and there are still some avails out there. Uh, they are limited. They go fast. Yeah. It is a pretty fun uh, thing to do. Uh, really, so Stephanie and I did it, uh, the overnight one for a little bit uh, last summer, and uh, it was quite the experience. Uh, fortunately, we had some guys there that had been doing it for a while, so they showed us the ropes uh, on what to do. But for the most part, uh, very little training needed to get out into the water and start uh, counting and yeah, trying sir. to pick up these big fish. Certainly. So we try to do a training on August 15th. We'll be sending out info if you do happen to sign up and you're wondering. Um, we'll, you'll be getting an email about that. But we'll mm -hmm. do a, a quick training on how to work with the fish, handle the fish, and kind of what we're asking for. But other than that, um, either you know our staff will show up and I'll train you, or um, we've got a, a really good mix of volunteers on this project, people who have been doing this since 2000. Um, and so chances are you know, you'll be either following... Um, you know, some experienced volunteers are be paired up with another one. And so it's, it's really easy. We've got a nice heated trailer on site as it starts to get closer into October. Yep. So if you're thinking you might be chilly, we've got you covered. We've got hot cocoa and other cool snacks in there. And, um, it's a lot of fun. It's great. Whether you're a, a student looking for maybe experience in that natural resource field, whether you're, um, just someone looking to give back to the community. It's, it's really great fun for all ages. It's something that um, everyone can do. And it's great even just to visit if you're not sure you want to volunteer, but maybe you want to check it out this year, stop by all of our volunteers are, are ready to talk to you a little bit about the project. You can um, usually see fish spawning on site as we get into late August. So um, either way, just get your family down there, whether it's volunteering or just checking it out. Last year, 
biggest numbers you've had, right? Yeah, last year uh, we had just shy of 5,800. So that was our biggest uh, non-supplemented return on record. So um, previously we'd had a little over 11,000 fish um, back in 2003, which was our big supplementation year. Um, so we expected that, but this was the largest um, completely wild run. So um, our volunteers were kept pretty busy. I was getting calls throughout September of um, volunteers who were, were dealing with about 100 fish an hour at least. Um, just nuts. 100 fish an hour. So yeah. they come into the trap and, and the volunteers uh, can try their hand at grabbing them with their hands. Otherwise, there's some netting that you can use because these things are big when they come back. They are, yeah. Our summer chum can get pretty decent size. Um, a lot of them somewhere anywhere between 12, 16 pounds, um, which doesn't seem like much, but they've got some nice size to them. They're pretty gnarly looking. Well, and they're they kicking got, around. Yeah, they got crazy teeth. And yeah, as it starts to build up, sometimes it is a little easier. You know, we've got some nice gloves so you won't hurt the fish um, in trying to pick them up. And we've got a net there. And so uh, we try to pair up our volunteers so that um, one is out there actually netting the fish and collecting the info. And then we've got another person there to help record all the data because if, as you can imagine, 100 fish in an hour, um, it'd be pretty hard to do by yourself. You barely can turn around and things back filled up. Exactly. Yep. I will say on a personal note, the volunteer, um, like the docents, the the guys who kind of know what they're doing have all been very friendly uh, and uh, they, I mean, they understand that you're volunteers and you're real green at these types of things and they'll walk you through every step of the way. Uh, and you know, it's not like they're going to yell at you if you do something <laughs> wrong. Uh, it, they, they, they've all been very helpful and very nice. All the folks I've dealt with. I'm there. glad to hear that. And that's, you know, really what this is about. This project's really unique compared to just about anything else in the country, especially mm -hmm. here in the Northwest with salmon and that this is completely community driven. So, um, right now we're, you know, we're having talks with all of our different state tribal federal partners about the potential to delist summer chum from the the Endangered Species Act in the next decade, potentially. And that's going to be partially a result of the work that's been done on the Union River. The, um, the contributions from that and reestablishing the Tahuya River stock is, you know, going to help get us there. And that's because of our volunteers. And so we really rely on this help. Um, without that help, we couldn't do this project. So how is um, the music on the estuary? Yeah, the music on the estuary has been great. Uh, we've been talking about this idea for a few years now and just trying to get the logistics together and um, everything just kind of lined up this year with uh, our AmeriCorps program being able to help us out a little bit. And so we've had um, two of our three shows. So we had the Psychedelic Shadow Show and the Lutman Posse in um, June. Great showing. We had almost 200 people come out, a number of vendors, and then stepped it up a little bit with Community Center. Um, came out from Baltimore, Maryland. Um, this just earlier this month and um, about 200 people again lots of food craft wow. vendors local artists uh, just a great community event and so we've got one last show august 25th it's a saturday um, and we'll have swing fever which is a, a local uh, kind of swing cover band in the north mason area they put on a great show we're expecting lots of vendors again and so um, be great opportunities to bring the family down tickets are just five dollars children 12 and under free and mason transit has a free shuttle bus from the hood sport and shelton area so yeah. you can get all the wet, uh, info at pnw salmon center dot org slash music very cool seth it's always good to see you yeah same to you both thanks and, for having me uh, on we will check in with you and i'll see you out there on the river before too long sounds good looking forward to it